Next, we look at number C, or letter C. C says, what is the acceleration of the rock at any time t during its flight? So you know that acceleration is the second derivative. And when it says the acceleration at any time t, they mean that they want the function for the second derivative. You're not going to plug anything in for t. You're just going to keep it as a function. So basically, if I have to summarize here, in C, we're going to try and find the acceleration function. To do that, I start with the original function. Then I take the first derivative, and then the second derivative. And then I'm just going to rename this function using a for acceleration. a of t is the second derivative, which was negative 32. And I'm so sorry, there should be no t there. It's just negative 32. Now, this looks like a number, but it's actually a function. It's just the constant function. And that's the answer to c. In d, we're asked to find when does the rock hit the ground. You should recognize when means what time. And if I'm looking for time, I'm going to write an equation and solve for t. Now, the question is, what equation am I going to write? Is it an equation with the derivative, with the original function, with the second derivative? The clue is in the end here. Hitting the ground means that the height of the rock is 0. So we're actually talking about its position. So I want to set up an equation where the position of the rock equals 0, and then solve for t. Here's what it looks like. We take the original position graph and set it equal to 0. To solve this quadratic equation, since there are only two terms, I'm going to take out a GCF. And then I can set each of these factors equal to 0. And we see that there are actually two solutions. What does that mean? Well, it means that the rock was on the ground at time 0. That makes sense. It started there. And then it's on the ground again at time 10, which means this must be the time when it hits the ground after flying. And that's your final answer. Let's do one more practice problem. And before we do this practice problem, I want to introduce you to two terms which will come up frequently in this class and definitely if you study um, any economics in college. And these terms are marginal revenue and marginal cost. Economists and manufacturing companies are often in a position where they have to decide whether or not to produce more of a, that should say, product. Uh, when making this decision, usually they want to know before they make more of whatever they're making that it's not going to hurt their business. So they look at how producing more will change their costs and their revenue. And cost is the amount of money they have to spend in order to create something, and revenue is the amount of money they will get back after selling what they create. So they're looking at how costs and revenue change with respect to the amount they're producing. So we're no longer using time as our independent variable. Now the independent variable is the number of things that we're making, or the amount of product. Marginal revenue is the term for the rate of change in revenue with respect to the amount of product. And marginal cost is the rate of change in cost also with respect to the amount of product. In other words, marginal revenue is the derivative of the revenue function, where the output is revenue and the input is the amount of product. The derivative of that is marginal revenue. And marginal cost is the derivative of the cost function that uses the amount of product and then tells you the cost of producing that much product. To put it practically, marginal revenue tells us how much more money you would earn from producing more, and marginal cost tells us how much more money you would have to spend in order to produce the same amount more. Pause if you need to look at these definitions, otherwise we'll do our last example. Suppose it costs C dollars to produce X heaters, and that R gives the dollar revenue from selling X heaters. If your shop currently produces 10 radiators, find the marginal cost and marginal revenue. Before we get to marginal cost and marginal revenue, let's just make sure we all understand what's going on here. We're given two functions. This function has an output of what? Right, the output is the cost, and what is the input? What do we plug in? 
Exactly. X represents the number of heaters. So if we were producing 10 radiators or heaters, how much does it cost us to produce them? Right, you just plug in 10 to this function, and if you do that, you should see that it's costing us $550. The second function represents the revenue. So if I plug in 10 here, what is it going to tell me? Yeah, it's going to tell me how much money I can make after I sell those 10 heaters. So if you do actually plug in the 10, you'll see that you can make a total of 820, which means your profit, the amount of money you get to go home with, is 820 minus 550. Okay, none of that is actually the question we're wondering about. What we're wondering about is should we produce more? We want to know whether producing a little bit more could increase our profits, but we want to make sure that it isn't going to increase our costs by more than it increased our profits. To do that, we'll set up our equations and we start with the cost function and the revenue function. And then I'm going to find equations for the marginal cost and the marginal revenue. And you should remember from the last slide, marginal cost is the rate of change of cost. In other words, it's the first derivative of the cost function which would be 3x squared minus 12x plus 15. And then I just plug in 10, which gives me 195. Careful with your units. The output of the cost function is dollars per. The input is number of heaters. So I'm going to say H. So it would cost me $195 to produce an 11th heater, is what this is saying. We'll compare that to the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is the change in revenue, in other words, the derivative of the revenue function, which looks like this. And then we plug in 10, and I get $252, which is how much money I could make from selling that 11th radiator, based on, I don't know, the demand for radiators. Um, comparing these two, we have to spend 195 but we'd earn 252 Seems like that's probably a pretty good deal. We could compare that to the marginal cost and marginal revenue of the first radiator, though, and we might find that we're actually not making as much money on the 11th one. This is the kind of, frankly, very complicated, but really important calculations that economists and business people do all the time. This is also where we end today's video. I expect, hmm, what's that? Oh, this is the end of the video here. So thinking about where we came from, I would expect that at the end of this video, you can answer questions about rate of change even when they're not just about position and velocity, in particular involving projectile motion, which is when something's flying up in the air or coming down, and marginal revenue. Don't forget the geometric formulas. You do need to know those as well. And I'll see you in class.